For this video, we're going to be talking about prefixes as well as writing equalities. And uh, equalities and conversion factors, I kind of consider the same. Your book separates them out into two different concepts, but in reality, they really are the same thing. So I'm combining section 1.7 with 1.8. I'm actually going to also incorporate some uh, simple components from chapter or er, section 1.9. I will also have another video explicitly talking about section 1.9. That's where kind of our, the bulk of our calculations will be. Okay, so let's first off start by talking about prefixes. We are going to be using the metric system. Um, for those of you who are scared of the metric system, um, it's really very simple and straightforward. It's confusing to a lot of you just because it's not what we learn typically in the United States, uh, which is very, very unfortunate because the metric system is highly logical uh, and you don't have to memorize uh, you know, specific things like three uh, feet in one yard and 5,280 feet in one mile. These are kind of random numbers that you just have to memorize. With the metric system, it's very simple. It's all based on moving the decimal. Okay. Um, so our prefixes in the metric system, these are um, letters, they're symbols that are added to our base units in order to either increase or decrease by some sort of factor of 10. All right, in your book, it gives you um, basically what the prefixes mean. I just wanted to also point out that I have base units. I did switch colors so that that word, that vocab word comes and jumps out at you. These base units were kind of discussed or um, addressed in the pre-lecture worksheet talking about uh, section 1.3. So basically uh, for our mass, we have grams as our base unit. We can build on that. So we have centigrams, kilograms. Those are our prefixes here that we can build on. Length is meters, millimeters, kilometers, centimeters. Um, our volume are liters. So we have milliliters is really the, the most common um, metric unit that that we use for volume liters versus milliliters so you want to maybe re refresh that if that's uh, something that's a little confusing to you so for our uh, metric and our metric prefixes here there are some that make our number larger and there are others that make our value smaller and the ones above here, these are increasing our value. The ones below are going to decrease our value. Now, you will want to commit these to memory. Okay. Yes, it's an online course. You obviously have the ability to have your book open, uh, to be able to flip back and forth and, and look at these. But this is really something that you're going to want to commit to memory. We're going to use these a lot. You're going to want to make sure that they become second hand, just automatic things for you. Um, so basically what you're going to want to memorize is you're going to want to know your prefix. You're going to want to know your symbol. And the numerical value and the scientific notation are basically saying the same thing. Okay. I find that the numerical value is much more difficult to remember because you have to remember uh, zeros. 
Okay, scientific notation, a little bit simpler and straightforward to remember. Okay, the equalities, as long as you know your, uh, what the scientific notation, what the value of that symbol is, you can come up with these equalities. These are just kind of um, basically just examples okay, for you to look at. Um, the most common ones um, that we're going to use throughout the quarter, um, we're going to use kilo a lot. Okay. Um, mega, you're probably going to see in Chapter 1. You may not see elsewhere because we don't use it a lot. However, as computers get uh, bigger and bigger memory-wise, um, mega, giga, and tera, you've probably heard of all of these. You have megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes. Okay, bytes is the unit, the base unit of size for memory of computers, and you can add your prefixes to either make them that number bigger or bigger in the case of those three. Um, deci, we don't use a lot in chemistry uh, just because it is, you know, just one off of your base unit. We use centi a lot, milli um, a lot. This is micro. Uh, it depends kind of on what branch of chemistry you go into, but we will probably see micro um, a fair bit this quarter. Okay. The symbol for micro, this is called mu, and okay. this is a Greek letter, so I'm, I'm saying that it's called mu. Okay. Um, when I draw this out, I just kind of draw an M that has a big tail in front of it just to make sure that it looks different from uh, my other M's. Nano is one, um, again, depending on the branch of chemistry that you go into or science that you go into, you may see that more often. Um, others of you may not see it very often. Um, and Pico and Femto probably won't see it outside of chapter one. Okay. So basically the starred things are what you're gonna want to memorize. Uh, one thing to point out is M is a very, very common symbol used in chemistry. The mega is a capital M versus milla is a lowercase m. So you want to make sure you keep those very, very distinct. Okay? And then the mu um, is, looks like an M, so keep that in mind as well. So that's kind of our, our intro to the metric system. Um, we're going to use the metric system so that we can convert between, say, our base unit and some sort of unit using these prefixes. Okay. So, let's scroll down here. Um, basically, now we're moving on to the equalities. And again, I combine these with conversion factors. We're basically these we're we're setting these up in order to use them to convert our units, which is covered mostly in section 1.9 to actually do those calculations. So if we want to look at say an equality here, and we want to look at the equality between meters, our base unit of length and say millimeters. There are a couple different ways for you to do this, okay? but what I suggest is that whenever you're filling in an equality for the metric system, you're always going to put the one with the prefix. Okay? And then what we're gonna do in order to figure out how many meters are in one millimeter is we're going to replace replace the prefix with its value. So the value of our milli, that's what our lowercase m stands for. If we look up at our table here, we have milli is 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so its value is 10 to the negative 3. 
that's what we're going to put over for our other thing, our other base unit here. So one millimeter, we're going to replace that milli with its value. So we'd have one, keeping that one there, times 10 to the negative three. Now one times anything is just itself. So most of the time what, what we'll write this as is we'll say 10 to the negative three meters is equal to one millimeter. Okay. This is our equality. Okay. Anytime that we have something equal to something, that's what we call an equality. Now a conversion factor is using an equality and setting it up so that we can use it to convert our units. So from each equality, there are two different conversion factors. We can either have 10 to the negative three meters over one millimeter. That is one conversion factor, oops, sorry. Or our second conversion factor is the flip of this where we have one millimeter over 10 to the negative three meters. All right, let's do a couple more of the equalities. I trust that you'll be able to write your conversion factors out if you would wish from your equalities. Uh, but I wanna just practice a, a few more um, so that we get the idea of how to use the metric system. So again, remember I reserved that top third, or not top third, uh, the, the top half inch or so um, for notes of what this is. So basically I have, you know, this is section 1.7, 1.8, you know, I probably put uh, continued there. So I knew if I saw that heading, if I was looking for the beginning of this, I'd know I'd have to go at least one page sooner. So let's do some more. So let's uh, figure out how many meters in how many kilometers and how many liters, and how many milliliters. Go ahead and try those out. Use your table uh, from your book, and you can pause the video if you'd like, uh, and the answers will be here when you get back. All right. For our first one here, remember we always want to put the one with our prefix, okay? And then our kilo value is 10 to the three. So we're gonna put 10 to the three over with our meters. For our second one here, again, the one goes with the prefix. Okay? Our milli value is 10 to the negative three. So we have 10 to the negative three over with our liters. Now notice this is the same, or at least looks very similar from liters to milliliters as it does from meters to millimeters, okay? When our um, metric is the same, we're going to be using the same numerical values. The only thing that we change is our base unit. Okay. So we can do the same thing if we say wanted to use the base unit for time, which is seconds. Okay. If we have seconds and milliseconds, for every one millisecond we have 10 to the negative 3 seconds. Okay. All right. As a side note, if this works for you, great. Use it, um, stick to this, OK? 
Okay. Some of you may be already thinking to yourself, well, I've never really heard of this. Uh, the way that I think about this, let me put this as side note. Some people would say that instead of one millisecond and 10 to the negative three seconds, they would write this as one second is equal to 10 to the three milliseconds or write that as a thousand milliseconds. Okay, all that's doing, all that's saying is it's uh, using the reciprocal. So instead of saying 10 to the negative three, if we flip that, we make that positive when we switch where that one goes. Okay, um, more commonly, most people look at in one meter, we have 100 centimeters. Okay. Now that works, that's just fine. The equivalent of this, if we, um, oops, we're looking at meters and centimeters, okay, it's just, it works exactly the same to stick with how I've taught it up here, where you have one centimeter, replace that centi with 10 to the negative two, okay? These are the same. So if this side note makes sense to you, go ahead and work with that, okay? If this side note totally confused you and you're getting a little panicked, don't worry about it. Stick to how I've taught it above here, where you always have the one corresponding with the prefix.